A very warm welcome to online worship with the congregation of Trinent Parish Church for Sunday the 27th of March, the 4th in Lent. I have just one intimation for those who live in or around Trinent, and that is that we are going to be holding an open day at the church hall on April the 23rd, and that's from 10 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that is to raise funds to support refugees coming from Ukraine. So if you are able to come along, then you are more than welcome. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 32. We come in hope to a merciful Lord. The Lord is understanding. The Lord's ears are open. The Lord hears our prayers and keeps us from trouble. We trust in the Lord. The Lord surrounds us with love. Praise the Lord. Our first hymn on what is a beautiful sunny morning here in Trinent is For the Beauty of the Earth. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the Father. We are your children. 
You watch over us, however far from you we go. Lord, you are patient and loving, and we turn back to you. Lord God, you are the Son, we are your brothers and sisters, you walk with us whether we recognise you or not. Lord, you restore our lives and make us new, and we turn back, coming closer to you. Loving God, you are the Spirit and you live in us. You meet us here whether we laugh or cry. Lord, you fill us with hope and peace, and we turn back, coming closer to you, coming into your presence. Father, Son, and Spirit, we meet you here with expectant minds and hopeful hearts looking to be changed. And so, Lord God of mercy, we trust in you and we confess our sins. We confess to you the things we have done and the things we have left undone that have hurt you and others. We are sorry for our failure to care for the planet in the ways that we are called to. We are sorry when we keep far away from you and waste what you have given us freely, time, energy, money. We are sorry when we live as if your love is limited and scarce and grudging, and when we forget that your love is full of generosity and lasts forever. Forgive us, Lord. Loving God, thank you for the comfort that comes with your mercy, for the freedom which comes of being released from shame, and thank you for rolling away the burden of guilt from our lives. Thank you that you are a father who welcomed his lost son home with open arms and wants to restore our relationship with each other and with the whole earth. In gratitude for your love and care for us, we pray together the words which Jesus taught us to say in whichever words are most familiar to each one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our Bible readings today are from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, reading from verses 9 to 12, and then from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, reading verses 1 to 3, and then 11b to 32. And our readings are read to us this morning by Laurie Brett and Wendy Archibald. Good morning. Our reading is from Joshua, chapter 5, at verse 9 to 12. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. Good morning. Our reading this morning is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 3 and 11b to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. 
So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his feed fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was killed with, filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to the slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son is in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked him what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours come back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Amen. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Our hymn is There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is Mothering Sunday, or Mother's Day, a day in the past for people to return to the mother church or home church, to the church of their baptism, or far more likely today, it is a day for cards and flowers and for visiting family. And the lovely spring weather here in Trenent helps that feeling of celebration. But I wonder if it is Children's Day too, however the ch- old the child is. For relationships are two-way things. And a parent is only that in relationship to another human being. And there is a World Children's Day, did you know, on November the 20th at the other end of the year. But it hasn't taken off in the same way in terms of celebration amongst families. And there are no cards in the shops. In Lent, in this time of reflection, however, we may on this day reflect on our broader family relationships of mother, father, child, brother or sister, or of any relationship where we have the opportunity and the responsibility to love and to encourage others in life. Always remembering and knowing that God always invites each of us to grow at whatever stage we are in life. And that can involve, as we move on to a new stage, starting to learn something new for the very first time. Bringing a new baby home for the very first time is a huge thing. The baby comes out of hospital into the daylight for the first time. And if the baby's coming home in a car, there is a job of getting a car seat safely secured when the responsible parent may feel a little bit clumsy, all fingers and thumbs. And the drive home may be slower than usual, less even than a 20 mile speed limit with very gentle braking. I remember bringing my first child home for the first time and bringing him inside and safely belted up in a car seat, putting him down in the middle of the front room and then looking at him and wondering what to do next. Over 20 years ago, hospital stays for new mothers were much longer and I had been cocooned for several days with the help of nurses and midwives. And now, with no experience at all of having looked after a baby, I and my husband were on our own. When the midwife did come to visit later that day, she rushed to shut the windows as the place was far too cold. My life had changed forever. I could no longer sleep when I wanted to. I had entered another stage in growing up. For now, for the first time, I was caring for another human being who was totally dependent on others. Doing a grown-up thing is taking up a responsibility in some way. And there is something of that in the lesson from Joshua, which we have heard read today. Gilgal is the place where the Israelites camped after crossing the River Jordan into Canaan, the Promised Land. And this was the end of their wanderings in the wilderness for 40 years. And during that time, God had provided them with food to eat, manna. Manna that they found when they woke up in the morning. It was enough for their needs and then they had no need to make provision for themselves. Yet now on entering the land of Canaan, they are to provide for themselves to grow their own food, always with the basis that God has given them everything that they need to do that. They now have decisions and choices to make about how to live and how to grow up. These decisions are to be made by both sons in the parable we hear in the gospel today too. And it is one of Jesus' most familiar stories. We start off with its given name, the parable of the prodigal son. 
the story of the son who had a hunger and a yearning to travel the world, to go off to a far off place to see things for himself. And he demanded his inheritance early and went far away. He had been provided for at home. He had been given the means to provide for himself when he left, but he still had some growing up to do. Everything went wrong and he was left penniless and hungry. For he had chosen to turn away from his family, his country and his religious heritage. For no observant Jew would come so close to pigs. He was alone and adrift. His decision to come home is not so much to a place, but to a person, a father. And that's emphasised in the story so much more in the fact that the father runs out to meet him. And sometimes going home is not going home to a place unless the people whom you expect to find there are there, occupying the rooms and coming out to welcome you. This prodigal son thought that his father would reject him as a son and as part of the family. He would only be acceptable as a hired hand, perhaps showing the human tendency to think of God's love as much smaller and less generous than it really is. And when this forgiving father accepts him, wrapping his arms round him with the utmost generosity, he couldn't have received a warmer welcome. But there is another way of titling this parable, and perhaps it is the parable of two lost sons. For the father has two sons. The other son, the elder brother, needs to come home too. He also has chosen to be alone. He is angry and refusing to come inside and join the party. And perhaps there is something of the angry toddler in him, for he is not the centre of attention. And perhaps he is shouting out that the welcome his brother is getting is just not fair. He needs to grow up too. And then we may remember that Jesus is speaking to Pharisees and scribes who are grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. For these folk were sure that they were in God's good books and they were certain about who was not. The elder son refuses to come in for he is the good son who stayed at home to help his father. But his whole great sense of grievance, the importance of taking a stand, to him is more important than accepting the generosity of his father's love. So the father goes out to him too, begging him to come in. But perhaps the parable of the prodigal son or the parable of the two lost sons is at heart really the parable of the loving father or of the loving mother who is completely missing from this story. For it is really all about him. He is the father who does the new thing of reaching out to both his sons, going out to meet them where they are, full of forgiveness, defying convention and what would be expected of him, which would be to preserve his own dignity. Instead, he goes out running, not walking, he goes outside when they are both insiders to welcome them in, for he knew them both and loved them. There is no ending to this story, and we don't know what happened next to this family, to the older brother or to the younger brother. And there's an open question there for the scribes and Pharisees who were listened to its very first telling. Will they join and welcome and sit and eat with those who they judge wanting, who they see as so different to themselves? And it is a continuing question for us too. For perhaps in the church, we have used to being more like the elder brother than the younger son over the centuries from our more judgmental days. But perhaps we can start to answer this open question when we realise that we are all lost in some way, 
in different ways. And that our way in life, our growth in life, is keeping our eyes fixed on the Father's face, turned towards each of us, full of kindness and love, with forgiveness in his eyes, and with his arms stretched out towards us, welcoming us to him, welcoming us home as precious children. And perhaps part of the answer is to remember that everyone we meet in our days is a precious child of God too. Amen. Our hymn is Amazing Grace. In our church service today, we are showing appreciation to Wilma Hanna, who is retiring from 30 years of service as an elder with the congregation at the end of March. Wilma served for many years as a session clerk as well, and we are so grateful to her for all that she has done. Our prayers of thanksgiving and for others are led today by Connor McFadgen. And now for our prayers for others, ourselves and the world, let us pray. Loving God, you nurture and care for all. Today we give thanks for our mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, mothers with us here today and mothers long entered into your glory for adopted mothers and for adoptive mothers, and for fathers who fill the role of mother also. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for families, the traditional and the non-traditional, and in all the guises that they come. We call upon you, Father, in these difficult times for families in our communities. When people are sick and struggling to make ends meet and all the additional pressures upon them, give them the strength and the power to carry on despite what is happening all around us. Help them to keep their eyes on you, 
comfort and strengthen them to make it through. Lord, in our parable reading today, you encouraged us to welcome the lost, the afraid and those seeking help. It is with that in mind that we pray for the refugees of our world. It seems never ending that we pray for the refugee crisis gripping the planet right now. With the situation in Ukraine, we are mindful that there are an estimated 30.8 million refugees across the globe right now. We pray for the 6.8 million from Syria, the 5.4 million from Venezuela, the 3.5 million from Ukraine, the 2.8 million from Afghanistan, the 2.2 million from South Sudan, the 1.1 million from Myanmar, the 1 million from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the 800,000 from Somalia. Lord, what can we do? Tell us. Give aid to the countries taking in these scattered and broken people. Bring peace to their lands. We lift to you our Ukraine appeal. Give us in its work to remember, guide us in its work to remember you in our fundraising efforts and ignite our imaginations as we explore new and exciting ways to reach our community and unite in this cause. Living God, this week we marked two years since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic restrictions in the UK. We call to you, through your son who even now prays for us. We still have so many questions. Many are confused, hurt and angry. Hear them, guide them, speak to them. Hear us as we give thanks for all who have sustained us through this time by their service. Nurses and carers, doctors and researchers, delivery drivers and vaccinators. We pray particularly for our teachers and schools right now. The virus is not over and the schools are very much evidence of this. Be with those suffering from the effects of the virus. Be with students whose education may never recover. And be with heads and council leaders as they seek ways forward to avoid disruption for all. We pray too for our world leaders across the globe. Be with them and influence them in their work and service to the world. Lord, in the silence, we bring to you those close to our hearts who are in need of your love and support right now. The grieving, the ill, the lost and the hurt. Lord, in your mercy, hear these and all our prayers which we bring to you through the love and sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy.
go from this time of worship in peace and in love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on you and remain with you and on all those you love and pray for today, now and forevermore. Amen.